SMT Nation, what is going on, good people? I just want to give you the heads up. In this video, there are chapters down here built into the timeline of this video for everything that's covered in this video. So if you're looking to jump back and forth, if you're looking for certain parts in this video, they're there. They're also in the description listed. So you guys can get to the parts you want if you want to jump back to and from. Thanks for tuning in. Let's go ahead and get this video started. So now my mouth is in the jailhouse with cases pending. First Amendment, you replaced it, rigged it, dubbed it down. It's not an option. Some of it, I understand. It's powerful. What's going on, SMT Nation? Glad you could tune into this edition of the channel. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Usually I do like news updates and I do reviews of like services and speed testing and stuff like that. But I want to tell you guys about a situation that's happening. And uh, it's pretty simple, actually. We're recording here from the lab of the SMT HQ. I just want to tell you guys that I'm a big proponent of fiber. I think fiber home internet is the ultimate connectivity for anyone on any standard. All things being considered, it's probably the most important thing to have reliable service. You know you can count on it, stays connected, it's always there. right? The best ability has always been availability. Fiber has been that. I've had it for a year. I've had it from AT&T, the U-verse product. It has been incredible. I've had the gigabit plan. One gig down, one gig up, and it's been phenomenal. I think it went down for one hour in one year. And I'm, I just think it was like an update or something. So it's been great. And just recently, this month, it's been one year, on the anniversary of that year, as a happy paying customer who's been very satisfied, they increased my pricing. If it was a modest 5, 10, 15% increase, I would have said nothing. I wouldn't have even cared. I basically would have just shrugged it off and just paid it. I have no problem paying for good service. And if that's what the price would be, have become, I'd be perfectly okay with it. The problem is they increase the pricing by 50%. That is a lot. That is enough for me to want to look in another direction. Fiber is the best. I have Cox Communications as an option. It's not really an option. It's unreliable. It's really awful. It's horrible. You guys know about my issues with Cox. It's a terrible ISP. Uh, the only thing worse than the company is its infrastructure and its horrible performance of its network. Trash. So not even an option, right? But Verizon offers fixed wireless access to the HQ. And I'm going to try it as a dedicated home internet solution because I should it's imperative that as a consumer you explore all your options it's called competition and if AT&T watches this video or hears about this video or sees this video whatever and they see that customers are serious about exploring the options they'll think twice about raising prices even if I know the fiber is better, which it is, no doubt. It's more reliable, it's all those things. It's faster, uplink, downlink. Right? I'm leaving gigabit per second by gigabit per second. Downlink, uplink. To go to the Verizon home internet option, which is 300 down and 20 up at its best, right? But if I can do everything with that fixed wireless access, 5G home internet from Verizon, if it allows me to do everything that the fiber allows me to do, it is imperative that I consider it, just in principle of those economics, right, as a consumer. And I think it's important that I do this. So I'm going to add it to my, my portfolio of connectivity. I'm going to keep the fiber for a few more weeks, and then I'm going to keep the Verizon Home Internet for a couple of months. I'm going to see if it can hold up. I got no contract with them. I got no hardware costs up front. I'm going to be paying $25 a month for Verizon's 5G home internet. If it can do 95% of what the fiber can do, I will be switching full time. So here we go. I got the setup for you here in this video. I got some initial speed testing on the wireless uh, connections like the Wi-Fi and also the Ethernet cable. Stay tuned as the SMT... goes Verizon 5G home internet. There it is, folks. Let's get this testing going, and let's get this setup going. Unboxing for you guys here today. 
uh, and a full setup. We're going to be doing the Verizon 5G home internet. Uh, there it is. They actually, I mean, this transaction was so easy. Contacted customer care. I said I want the 5G home internet. They verified that the service was available at my address and they sent it out and it literally was able to be picked up within like an hour. So I went to the store and picked it up the next day and here it is. Verizon Internet 5G Gateway. All right, this is the one that does the entire LT uh, C band, mid band 5G, and then also the millimeter wave. It does it all. It's got the whole shebang. Or no, I don't. I don't think this one does the 5G millimeter wave. All right, that's going to be the one that's up and coming later on in 2023. But we got it. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing. Let's do the full setup. We're going to follow all the steps, and as things happen, and it could be a problem for somebody setting it up. I'll make sure I highlight those things and let you guys know how to troubleshoot and get this thing going. So let's get this thing unboxed first, see what's in there, and then power up and do the setup. All right, let's do this. All right, you will see that when you first open up the box, the first thing you'll notice is the setup guide indicated there, and then the box you can actually see. It's exposed at this little window cut out here. And then behind it, I think it's got the power adapter and the ethernet cable. So the things that you've got to actually connect uh, the gateway. So let's go ahead and pull these things open. All right, so here is the box. Um, it definitely is a cube. It's got Verizon branding, bottom right-hand corner. Uh, we've got the box, that's pretty much it. I think this is gonna be where you do the reset for the, for the password and the setup. Uh, this is probably some kind of ventilation from what I could tell. It's wrapped up in this little plastic thing. No big deal there. Now, additionally, uh, it's got the, down here at the bottom, you got to rip off the plastic, but this is going to be where you connect your Ethernet cable. Uh, if you're going to set up with another router or something like that, but we're going to use this thing as intended. We're not going to connect another router or anything. We're just going to try out the box, the gateway itself to see how it's set up. But all the um, connectivity information is down here. So your power cable is going to connect down here. Your ethernet cables can connect down here and uh you know all your setup stuff there as well you're gonna have like your password and all that um which i'm gonna probably modify so it's easier for me as i do some testing but uh let's go ahead and get this plastic off all right so we got the plastic off and it's a plastic box with all the important radio gear and antennas on the inside um let me see there is definitely a qr code uh, there's a SKU number, there's an IMEI number, it's got the Wi-Fi name and the password back here, it gives you the password and everything. It says, designed in New York, made in Vietnam, and then it's got the Verizon Gateway branding at the top. And uh, just so you guys can see there, let me see if I can give you guys a little bit of a zoom. You got the zoom look here, you will see that you got the power port there for power, and then you got your cables that connect down there, and then it even indicates like, LAN 1 and LAN 2, and then all the FCC information. Yeah, and this looks like ventilation to the top, because I got one of these um, set up at the uh, at my parents' house, and they've been using it for a while, the first one I got. So, anyways, I think this thing is basically designed to sit like this, right, so that the ventilation works from the top, kind of like how those new Xbox Slim models are designed. So this thing will lay, you know, stand up flat, and then the ventilation is through the top. Uh, it shouldn't have an issue down here. I know, you guys are probably surprised. Why am I setting this up in a lower level? And that's because my home tower for Verizon is absolutely GOAT. Uh, it's got an N77 upgrade, the C-band, and it also has CBRS. So I'm covered, and it all reaches to the lower level. Yes, the lower level. Okay, it works great. In fact, on device, I get like 350 megabits per second down here sometimes. 250 to 350 down, and like 10 to 20 up. So I'm guessing if I can do that on a phone, this gateway should have better antennas and radios with more gain and being a little bit stronger. This thing shouldn't be an issue at all to get 300 by 20, which is the promised amount from Verizon. All right, so let's get this thing powered up. Let's get the cable set up, and then we'll do some testing. All right, it says here that to get started, you got to place the gateway on a stable surface and as close as possible to a window or exterior facing wall. Plug in one end of the adapter into the gateway, the other into the power outlet. We don't need to do that. Our signal is that good here. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to just go ahead and set this thing up here on the second level of my desk and plug it in. And it says here, once you power it up, we're going to look for um, a solid white once it gets all set. Uh, once it's solid white, that means it's programmed. It say it may fluctuate between red and white while it's doing its startup setup. It says up to five minutes and it says don't unplug. So we're going to make sure we do that. And then actually, if, if you're having trouble and you want to see a more detailed setup process, you could just scan this and it probably takes you to a video of how you can set this up or just some directions. But this, this is as easy as it gets, folks. You just plug this thing in and then it'll just program by itself. It's just probably trying to connect to the nearest tower that has N77 if you bought this as a 5G service. And if you got this as a LTE service, then it'll probably upgrade from any tower. In fact, they'll all upgrade, they'll all program from any tower as long as it's got the right connection for the service you signed up for. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in, power it up and get the setup going. All right, so this is one of the containers or boxes uh, that comes with, comes with the service for some of the hardware here. All right, let's see what's in it, in this particular box. Um, Okay, it looks like I see a cable. What do we got here? Okay, so we got the, the plug. All right, so this is the main power adapter. All right, so this thing's going to plug into your wall or your surge protector. And you've got a little bit of length here. Uh, I'd guess that's probably about three feet or close to three feet. So I'll get about a meter. Uh, we'll get this thing plugged in here shortly. Okay, so we don't need this. And then let's see what type of cable they gave us. You guys can see it's one of those flat ones, the Ethernet cable. Cable, And let me see, do we have a cat rating on this thing? I don't know. Sometimes they're marked, but I don't see any markings on this one. Uh, but we'll test it out. We'll see what we got here. Is this thing marked? Uh, nope, I don't see a marking. Hopefully it's at least a Cat 6. Um, so there you guys go. Um, I'll put these away. All right, so here's kind of a view of the length of this cable. Looks like about three feet. Get that meter. All right, so we got this. We're gonna connect that, and we're gonna connect the power cable. All right, so we're just gonna plug it in here. You can see it goes right up here, like if you're looking where the internet gateway print is, you wanna just plug into this um, and actually the, the nice thing about this gateway is it's got a little spot here for you guys to be able to go ahead and plug in and then tuck the cable away. So it uh, gives you a little bit of give and there we go. And what you're going to see is you're going to start to see the lights coming on here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set up the cable. You guys can hear the ventilation has already kicked on. I could feel the airflow and there you'll see the white light. It's blinking. All right, so we're going to monitor this actually. And we're going to see how long this thing takes. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it over here for you guys to view as it goes through the setup process. And we'll watch it play the blinking game. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the, uh, the Ethernet cable here so we can connect it to the desktop and see how it performs. All right, folks, it looks like we are indeed set up. It stopped blinking. All right, so it's it's connected. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna test it wireless first because I think the cable that they gave me might not be long enough. I don't think it's gonna reach my desktop. So I'm gonna probably have to use my longer cable. Well, I've got a 100 foot ethernet cable, a Cat6. So I'm just gonna run that thing along and connect this, but we can go ahead and test the wireless piece. So I'm gonna grab a device. And we're going to test it. And I'm going to use my Google Pixel 7 because it's got Wi-Fi 6 enabled. And we're going to be testing this thing. Oh, okay. Looks like we may have prematurely uh, jumped the gun here. We saw the red light blink. Well, not blink, but it turned red. And that was what the setup guide was telling us that we might experience. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just wait for things to shake out a little bit here. And I'm going to wait for it to stay solid. But uh, it should be programming. No ventilation 
no warmth actually coming off the machine yet but again it's it's pretty cool down here uh the temperatures down here are typically about 65 degrees fahrenheit so uh, and we're in the winter months right so i don't have to worry too much about that okay i see yellow now all right that is definitely not white it was white before then it it was white blinking then it was white then it was red now it's yellow so i don't know what that means um but i'm gonna go ahead and scan that thing and see what it tells me all right so we are red again and i did scan the uh i scanned the qr code on the bottom and it automatically said like the name of the network and it i think it was probably trying to connect to the password so i'm gonna take a look at that i'm gonna turn on my wi-fi radio and see what it does here see if it saved that connection because right now it's just showing me my home network which is not this but you'll see that we're getting some color changes red yellow uh, maybe we can figure out what the red means see it's reading red i wonder if the signal's not good enough but that's that's unusual because my pixel gets 5g ultra wideband down here and so does my iphone all right so that's kind of interesting let's go ahead and scan that thing and see what it tells us we'll try this one more time all right, it says Verizon, and then it's got the name of the network. You guys will see there as it's still yellow over here. Uh, and then it says sign into the network. All right, it says click continue to verify and connect your device. And we're playing the waiting game. <laughs> click continue to verify and connect the device, and we're just waiting. Hopefully it's not the T-Mobile network taking forever to connect. And it says, thank you, your device activation is almost complete. To complete the activation process, please power off your device and wait for 10 seconds before powering on the device. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, folks, we're back in action. We're just following the directions. This thing just reset and the vent system kicked on, the fan started running. And this thing is going to probably play the blinking game for a couple of minutes as it reboots and sets up all the connectivity and gets everything going. So we're just playing the waiting game as we wait for this thing to complete its final provisioning. Uh, it should be good. I didn't see any indications of issues. We follow the directions. We should see that Verizon connection showing up in our log here on the phone. And we're going to be testing the wireless connections. And then we'll do the Ethernet connection as well. So we'll do the 2.4 gigahertz. We'll do the 5 gigahertz. We got the Wi-Fi 6 and the Wi-Fi 6E on this phone too, so we can test those as well. All right, and we'll see how that performs. Uh, we are indeed connected to my AT&T fiber. That's the SM2, SMT HQSS. That's the 6E. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 5, and then the SMT HQR. That one is the um, 2.4. The only thing on that is probably my surveillance system that's probably it anyways um yeah we're, we're gonna wait for this to pop up we're just waiting for this to stop blinking and i've had experience with this because i got to set it up at my parents house and when you restart these things it does take a few minutes for that blinking to stop and for it to kind of fully restart and boot up and i think we're there i just noticed that it stopped blinking and we should be able to see that the verizon network here says save no internet access okay so we'll see what it says connected to device but can't provide internet hmm. all right so it says tap for options this network has no access huh save but won't connect see how it's red I wonder if this is telling us something. I wonder if the signal isn't good enough. And it wants us to get this thing to have a better signal. And it's not connecting. I don't know. That's weird. Let's see. Can't provide internet. I don't think this thing is... It's not really rocking. Oh, there it is. It is connected. Okay, so maybe you'll get some of those error messages as you're setting up. Just be patient. Wait for that connection. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Wait. Maybe. Okay. 
I think we are connected. Okay, let's check out the info. 5 gigahertz frequency is what it's connected to. Okay, so it's on Wi-Fi 6, I believe. Okay. So just to confirm, we are connected to the Verizon connection. We are on the 5 gigahertz. Let's go ahead and run some tests and see how the wireless is connecting. I remember we are in the in the lower level and the, it does guarantee up to 300 megabits down and 20 megabits up for this service. 31 ping, 6 jitter, we got a loaded ping of 165 and we got an, and that's the, on the downlink. Okay, and wow, it's really good uh, for the loaded downlink and the and 311 for the loaded uplink and 22. So, are we getting the promised service? Are we getting what they told us we should be getting for speed? Yes, they promised 300 by 20. We're getting 318 by 22. So we're even doing a little bit better. Let's do another test. Now I think what we'll do is we'll hit the end perf. And we will also hit the fast.com. And then we'll just do some general usage. So if you guys appreciated the setup and all the elements of that and all the problems that we came overcame, uh, tap that like button and comment uh, that you've enjoyed the video, learned something, and found this useful. All right, 31 ping, as again, uh, $3.99 for the download uh, load ping. We got a two jitter and 170 for the upload ping and we got almost 21 megabits up so we're, we're basically getting what we wanted right all right we'll do one more uh this is 3 p.m right here in the cle we got a snowy day actually on a sunday all right so we are on the weekends so far so good folks nothing we can't live with 32 ping four jitter 673 for the uh, the loaded ping on the downlink and what are we at here upload ping pretty low wow 124 so 21 on the uplink good stuff here what do you guys say we test uh, fast.com now uh, do I have fast.com on here I should there we go So this is connecting to Netflix servers. This is like a video resolution playback type of test, right? Looks good to me. 280 down. Okay, so that's good. Let's go ahead and run the nperf. I should have nperf on here. Uh, the nperf test is cool because what it does is it'll test all aspects of you know network access. So it'll run a video test. It'll run a speed test. It'll run a browsing test. Uh, you will see it says Wi-Fi 1200M. Verizon Wireless and the name of the network. Okay, we'll launch the full test. And with the beauty of fast forwarding. All right, now it's doing the video resolution playback test after the browsing and the speed test. It will test 360p playback, 720p and 1080p. The only thing I would do if I could change something about this app would be a 1440p and a 4K test and that would be perfect then this this app would be absolutely tremendous again the first test we ran was ookla speed test if you guys want to download that app and do your own testing uh, the second one was fast.com the netflix server test and then this one is nperf which does um multiple tests all right so there you guys have it 360p 91 percent, 95 percent. i mean we got good stuff here all right so the way this turned out was 305 down for the max downlink with a 194 average we got about a 21 megabit uplink with a 15 average. Latency came in at 48. I don't know why the servers on this app are so crappy. Uh, the total endpoint score was 106,000. Both were ranked very, uh, really good. The browsing came down because of the zoom test, which is always terrible. But we got over 80% for the browsing rating and almost 94% on the streaming rating. So that's really good stuff there, right guys? I think all we really have to do now is just basically test the ethernet to see if that's going to give us the 300 by 20 and how it performs on the desktop. So we'll go ahead and set up for that.
All right, y'all, we're on the desktop right now, and I just went ahead and went to the Google speed test that's built into the browser. Uh, you just go to speed test in Google, and then you can hit run speed test, and it'll let you know how it's performing. And I left the, I left the modem in the same spot here, right? I didn't really want to change it. I wanted to keep it the same because we kind of already tested it there, and I just want to keep things consistent. All right, so we got 246 down and we've got about 13 to 16 up for our range, connecting to a Columbus server at 45 millisecond. Uh, it says here, your connection should be able to handle multiple devices, streaming HD video, video conferencing, and gaming at the same time. All right, I think one of the things I'm gonna probably do later is gonna be putting this thing to a gaming test, right, when I'm playing FIFA or something. I think some of you want to know if they're if it's good for gaming. Another thing I want to do is I probably want to test this thing on the upper level to see if it changes anything. To see if maybe that downlink and that uplink can be a little bit more consistent. 236 down and 19 up. Alright, well. It's pretty good. It's it's close to what we initially got with the wireless setup. So we're we're kind of hanging around this 250 mark, 260 here. And it's holding steady. I think really as a follow-up to this, right, as we move forward with the testing, is going to be does this stand the hands of time? Are the speeds going to remain consistent? Because that's been the question about fixed wireless is what's going to happen long term as more and more people get on the service and the network? It doesn't get congested. I'm going to just have to keep this thing long term and continue to test. So far, so good. 259 down and 13 up. Uh, looks good so far. Okay, so... um. There you guys have it. Uh, we tested Ethernet wire, right, to the box. You guys will see it's connected. Cable's right there. Uh, we tested the Wi-Fi. Uh, I mean, it's so far so good. I think what I'll do in some follow-up videos is test the Wi-Fi range for the actual box. Put this thing upstairs in the main level, put it in the upper level, see how it performs, those kinds of things. So uh, if, if you want more coverage from this, uh, from from this Verizon 5G home subscribe for more and then turn on the bell notifications as I make more content on this and also in the comment section tell me what you want me to test uh, what tasks what things you want me to do um, maybe certain locations within the house uh, I, the only thing I'm unwilling to do is going to be plugging this thing outside uh, the first and the first reason for that is not weatherproof and the second reason for that is the signals good in here I don't need it outside that would be ridiculous all right, so um, let me know what you guys want to see as I cover more. Hope you guys enjoyed the unboxing, the setup, and the testing. Subscribe for more. Like I said, don't miss any videos from my coverage on this service. Um, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys very much. Big shout out to the SMT Nation YouTube members, as well as my Patreon supporters making coverage like this possible. Thank you, y'all the goats. Uh, words of positivity as we head out this video here. Every new day is an opportunity to be great. Go out there and be great. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.